Welcome to today's episode of How the Game Was Won. We are now at game number 10. The 6th game of the tiebreakers in the World Cup, FIDE World Cup final match between Peter Swidler and Sergei Kayakin's World Cup of 2015. This game played on the 5th of October 2015. The World Cup, of course, is in Baku, Azerbaijan. And without further ado, let's see how this next game played itself out, bearing in mind that we are all Sergei Karyakin needs is a draw with the black pieces and Switzer needs to win with the white pieces in order to stay in the match. Winner taking a check of $120,000 and the loser taking $80,000. Bearing in mind that FIDE takes their 20% special tax off, so the $120,000 check loses $24,000 off the top and the $80,000 check loses $16,000 off the top with those that 24,000 and that 16 uh, that's a total of $40,000 going to feed it. But without further ado, this is how the game played itself out. e4, e5, knight e3, knight e6, bishop c4, bishop c5, c3, knight f6, we got a Guapo Piano system happening here which should be a really useful game for especially beginners to play their way through because Guarco Piano, I've noticed, is one of the most common openings that I've seen in amongst beginner games. And the way these two have been blundered lately, they, it seems an almost appropriate choice of opening. d3, d6, knight b to d2, castles, h3, knight e7, castles, king side, knight g6, bishop b3, a6, Rook e1, bishop a7, knight f1, bishop e6, d4, bishop takes on b3, queen takes on b3, queen c8, knight g3, rook e8, bishop g5, knight e7, knight f5, knight d to f8, h4, h6, h5, h takes on g, h takes on g, knight takes on g, knight takes on g, queen d7, g3. And now that the dust seems to be settling, let's have a look at what things were happening. But now instead of g3 in this position, why didn't Peter Swettler simply play something along the lines of rook 3, uh, rook to e3, the, the classic rook lift, swing that rook across the key, uh, king side, bring the other rook in to be able to lift that up to e3 and you've got a formidable attack running down the king's side which should be just about winning and especially when you're playing a five minutes aside blitz game it should be winning but anyway instead of doing that Switzerland played g3 which allowed d5 queen takes queen takes e takes in d5 rook a d8 king g2 rook takes in d5 and f4 for Karyakin, instead of playing something like c4, rook d7, d5 for instance, but anyway, f4 was played, f6, knight e4, rook d, d to back to d8, f takes on e5, f takes on e5, d5, rook takes on d5, and Karyakin calculates accurately that there were no tricks behind the, the, the d pawn push, and you've got knight h6, king f8, Rook f1, knight f4, check, g takes f4, g takes an h6, f5, king f7. Now that we're basically well through the middle game, let's have a quick recap on what we're looking at. And at the moment, you can see that uh, Karyakin with the black pieces is up a pawn. But at the same time, Swedler's knight on e4 is really really useful he's got this rook over here giving good support to the uh, passed pawn that's sitting on f5 so although um, Karyakin has got the extra pawn 
there seems to be more than enough compensation for what's uh, for what's going on, but the question remains is how well can Kariakin defend his position and will he be able to gain some sort of counterplay? Bearing in mind Kariakin only needs to defend incredibly accurately and force the draw and he'll pick up the title. Rook a d1, rook g8, king f3, c6, c4, rook d4, rook takes in d4, e takes in d4, rook h1, rook h8, rook g1, and here for instance, instead of rook g1, Swedler could have played something along the lines of knight d6, check with king e7, and knight takes in b7, and still Although tenuous, but there's still good, uh, uh, a slight advantage to white, which possibly we might allow Swiddler to be able to develop something towards a later end game, making use of that f5 pass pawn. But he played rook g1, which followed with rook d8, f6, king e6, rook g7, rook d7, Rook g8, d3, rook e8, check, king f7, rook h8, king e, e6, and now Swedler picked up the pawn, rook h6, which um, really is a completely losing move, but really at the, at the same time in this position, it's a case of whether it's a loss or whether it's a draw, it won't make that much of a difference because it will still mean Karyakin picks up the World Cup. And Karyakin continues with d2, f7 check, uh, king e7, which covers the f8 square, and, um, and you've got Karyakin threatening to Queen down here on d1 and uh, at the same time threatening to pick up the pawn. So there's no ways that Swidler will be able to win this game to keep himself in the match. And he just decided enough is enough, resigned the game, resigned the match, making Sergei Kalyakin the World Cup winner. 2015. But at the same time, what I have to say here is that with all of the photos that I've seen on the net about the Sega Kayakin picking up the World Cup, where is the World Cup? I've seen pictures of him celebrating the win, celebrating the win of the match, people congratulating him, but I've yet to see an actual cup. Football, rugby, all sorts of other, other tournaments, golf, have fabulous trophies for a World Cup, but where is Chess's World Cup? But be that as may. So Sergei Kayakin is your World Cup winner. Uh, Peter Swidler must be feeling absolutely dejected at the moment, but bearing in mind, in just a couple of days' time, the World Championships in both Blitz and Rapid Chess will be kicking off. And the one thing, piece of advice that I can pass along to, to Peter Swidler, as well as many of the other grandmasters and chess players out there, is keep it carb. Carbs are your friend. Get yourself on a whole food, plant-based nutrition system. Cut the fat, cut the animal protein, and you'll have far more energy without needing to suck on those cans and cans of Red Bull that I see next to your table every time you pay Peter. Get yourself on a high carb, low fat, low sodium, plant based lifestyle and get yourself the energy that you need to be able to handle these long and grueling sessions and grueling matches. That's my piece of advice, closing piece of advice to Peter. As far as everybody else is concerned, share, feel free to share this video out amongst all your chess friends. And also, don't forget, thumbs up if you like the content, thumbs down if not, that way I know what to be doing in the future. Also, 
post any comments, questions, criticisms that you have down below that way I can improve these videos so that your viewing pleasure is improving every time I put out a video. And last but by no means least, down below the video screen here in YouTube is a big red subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button that we stay subscribed to my channel for all the new content that comes out on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. See you next time for another issue of how the game was won in all likelihood coming from the three-day Rapid Chess World Championship Tournament. But until then, keep it carved, stay carved up for your win, and stay safe out there. See you next time.